Hey everybody, welcome to 36 Charge, a podcast about competitive Warhammer 40k, the state of the game and community news. We're streaming live at Twitch slash 36 Charge every Monday night at 7.30pm Eastern, uh, where you can follow and sub, and we're also anywhere that you can find uh, podcasts like Spotify or iTunes. Uh, I am Chris Vo, and joining me today is Kevin Lieb. Howdy, howdy. And Benjamin Rubenstein. Hey everyone. Hey, so as you guys can tell from uh, the, the title of this episode, uh, we're going to be talking about Thousand Suns. Uh, the Thousand Suns Codex came out uh, this past weekend along with uh, Hexfire. Um, and while GW has not deemed us worthy enough to get review copies, so, you know, we still, yeah. you know, got in some some practice games over the weekend. And um, Ben's built a couple of lists. And, you know, I think that from... Now, I didn't actually get any experience myself with the, the Codex, but from what I've read and what I've heard, um, you know, it it shake things. It's going to shake things up a bit. And, you know, there's a lot of cool new tricks in the Thousand Suns Codex. Um, before we get into that, uh, the three of us actually went to a doubles tournament uh, uh, this past weekend um, where Kevin actually took first place. Yeah, good job, Kevin. Um, so not much to talk too much about that doubles event. It was a, it was a lot of fun. Um, uh, my only thing I'll say to, I see we have some viewers from that tournament. Um, when you're writing lists for a team tournament, it's, you should have same philosophies that you are for regular 40k. Uh, you want to make sure you're doing something powerful and unique. Almost every faction has something powerful and unique they can do and you should really be in the team tournament if you should have two of those things because you get to play from two codexes and you want to have a game plan um for my i know that in team tournaments we were playing very short rounds with more points than usual for rounds so i knew short, get we were gonna get a lot less turns as i said last week i took we designed our list to we took Gazgo Thraker, who's really hard to kill in three turns, and two characters who were high point cost and could stand on the back line and never get shot. And that meant that we could have had a very easy to the last. And it turns out that in a three round tournament, being able to get 15 points from a secondary is like much better than anyone anyone else's. So and basically, three rounds, you, mean three, you mean three battle rounds, right? Three battle rounds, yes, yeah, sorry. sorry. Yeah. Um, um, and that's not like people are slow playing. You, you, uh, a regular tournament's supposed to be two hours and 45 minutes with 2,000 points, and we were playing two hours and 30 minutes with 2,500. Like, you just get less turns in those situations. And more people, right? You have to, like, discuss with your partner, like, hey, is it cool if I use all the command points this turn? Yeah. Um, yeah. Which, ideally, so think- like, you talk about that, like, on your opponent's turn, but that doesn't always happen. Yeah, right. so, so the nature of a team event is like already going to be slower, and then the rounds were shorter, and then the, 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 the armies were bigger. We went into it knowing we weren't going to finish games. Uh, my partner and I, we weren't going in with as much of a plan to like try and win the whole thing, because um, it was his first event ever. Uh, I was playing Harlequins, but we, I mean, we went in with a plan. The plan was that my army doesn't use command points. I'm going to hand them all to him because he's Harlequins. They can do silly things with command points. Um, and while we didn't win, we went two and one. We had a ton of fun. He got to do all of the things. Uh, our last round, um, the solitaire got to kill about a thousand points of models by himself, which was insane. He picked up ten hell blasters, a f- full unit of terminators, uh, Lazarus, uh, a unit of eradicators, a unit of intercessors, and like six wounds off of mortarian. It was gross. He killed everything. <laughs> I think uh, uh, it was a lot of fun. Yeah, so I had a good time uh, myself. Um, but I think for the next team tournament, if it's a similar points value or time uh, time per round, I, I think I'm just going to try to focus on creating a list that one can get through its turn uh, very quickly because, you know, like a chess clock, it's a double tournament. You're not going to use a fucking chess clock. Um, so you can only really control your time. And if your opponent is a slower player and I'm, I'm saying they're playing slower, not that they're slow playing you. Um, the faster you can get through your rounds, the, you know, 
the sooner they'll be done with theirs and then hopefully get more than like two or three rounds in. And then secondly, the thing that I would do differently is try to pick secondaries that um, are more end game than progressive. Uh, just because like if you're getting something like, say, Spread the Sickness, uh, me and my partner both played Death Guards. So we were taking Spread the Sickness, which you can only do once per turn and you know it gets you nets you three victory points per turn well if you only have you go to round three you've only had two opportunities to score that the max you're getting is six you know or as opposed to like you take like to the last you know very easy to cap out at 15 on that one in three rounds yeah um yeah, I just want to go back to what Kevin said, is that I think a big thing there is, like, just having a game plan. Because my partner, I knew, we had, like, a list of five secondaries, and we were going to pick three of them every game. Um, and a lot of people were kind of just, like, opening up their books and figuring out what secondaries were taking at the table, and that slowed things down, too, some more. Um, and also hurt, like, their ability to, like, participate, because when you're picking secondaries on the fly, you can, like, make some pretty egregious errors. Um, that being said, again, like it was a casual event, lots of people was their first ninth edition event, so it's not like I was expecting every person to show up and play perfectly. So it's like reasonable that people didn't do great. Um, and I think the next one will probably be faster, we'll probably get more turns in. Uh, I uh, probably through a combination of people knowing their armies better, people knowing secondaries better, and I suspect the format's gonna swap up a bit to either have longer rounds or smaller armies. Yeah, um, I also really quickly want to congratulate the, my teammate Rob, he's in the chat. Uh, <laughs> I think that is his that is his um first win for 40k uh in the tournament. So congratulations to him. Yeah, good job, Rob. Smash people with orcs. Yeah, yeah and cares. then uh shout out to, to Mike in the chat as well for uh getting uh the player's choice award for being the most fun guy to play with. Uh it's Mike. hard to do that with they were playing like Knights and Eldar, right? Like yeah, they were playing Knights and Eldar, and like, no, it was just an do. infectious <laughs> fun energy that it was just like, oh, whatever. <laughs> yeah, it is. It is. Uh, it is challenging to make that list fun to play against. So it's all more power to them for doing that. Yeah. Um. Um. Right, shall we? Uh. Yeah. So, so let's talk. Let's talk Thousand Suns. Um. So I, I, Ben, in the uh, in the pre-show, uh, you were saying like, hey, give you five minutes to just bitch about things in the thousand cents codex and then we can spend right. the rest of the time talking about what's good in it so like all right five minutes go <laughs> all right so i love this codex but there's a couple things in here that really just bother me the first one is that most of the cults they just copy pasted including the cults that were just doing nothing well there's only one cult that just does nothing and it continues to do nothing because they actually just like lifted the words from one page and just like put them back down into the new one um which is like, I, I, I don't, don't like that. No one ever took that cult competitively. You could just read it and see that it doesn't do anything. It's psychic powers, like do one mortal wound to a unit. It's I, it's relic roller trade. I actually just like can't remember. They just don't do anything. Um, That's unfortunate. Chris, yes. Oh, uh, Chris, we're getting a small echo from you from Be Mike's. Oh, sorry. Ben's mic. Um, oh. That's up. All right. Next complaint. I think about halfway through writing this codex, they forgot that psychers can't manifest powers when they fall back because there's one relic that lets you manifest powers when you fall back and then there's like four or five other instances where they like let a unit fall back shoot charge fight and they just like don't let you manifest why would i ever want to let my have my sorcerer fall back out of combat when i just like losing all of the psychic powers and i don't understand why i would ever take any of those abilities um they also just like copy pasted all of the terrible relic weapons, like all like the, the bad relic pistols and the bad relic staff are like still in here. And then they just like added more. Um, if you wanted to, you know, spend the command points to put like the extra relic weapons on your troop leaders, you could like actually just take an army with six bad relic weapons in it. Um, GW, come on. Like you like we we've seen good relic weapons in other books like orcs have relic weapons that make you think, hmm, maybe I want that. And then Thousand Suns have Relic Weapons that this is just a four staff that's also a heavy flamer. And I don't I don't really want that. <laughs> it, it feels like that reminds me of like a Custode Relic and like Custode Relics are all besides the Superbike are all pretty bad. Yeah, or like this hand flamer has two more strength. Yay, it's a Relic. I, I don't I don't get a GW. Like, why would you do that? Um. And my last thing is this the thing that I'm like a little sad about, which is Magnus. Magnus is very good, but he's not competitively viable. Um, 
And then being Magnus, he's also not really casually viable because he's perfectly capable of ruining casual games because he's of his damage output. Um, but he lost any ability to get a three up and vulnerable save. And they replaced it with he's always at minus one damage. Uh, but he's only toughness seven. So he's T7 minus one damage taken with 18 wounds, which is a five up feeling pain and a toughness eight away from being as tanky as Mortarian is. And Mortarian gets blown off the table in one turn like pretty regularly. Um, so I just like can't justify ever putting Magnus in a list if unless like the meta is entirely melee oriented. Um, so yeah, Magnus is just like a feel bad. He just doesn't, he, he's just like not going to be playable this edition. Like he's 450 points. Um, I'm glad that they made him go down in points with these changes because he definitely got worse. But it's not like he was that good before. Um, so yeah, Magnus is disappointing. But all right, I'm done complaining. Everything else in this book is super exciting, like crazy exciting. Um, are you guys cool if I hit on a couple themes and then you guys can chime in? Like yeah. a couple things that are like, true across the book. Okay, so one of the things that are going to be true with this book. So if you're playing with it or against it, it's going to take a long time to get used to this. They went real loose with their definition of core. Um, there's so core is used like properly, like the multiple core on are correct. They put it on like Rubric Marines, Scarabur Cult Terminators, um, Cultists, Held Roots, like the things that you expect to have core. Cool. Um, nothing cares about core. Like the reroll aura cares about core. There's a really sick relic that cares about core. And there's like a couple stratagems that care about core. All the psychic powers don't care about core. The majority of the cult relics, warlord traits, and whatnot don't care about core. Um, the psychic power is the big one. There's, there's just not a psychic power that says core. They just they can all just be pointed at anything. You want to give your land raider a four and vulnerable save, you can do that. You wanna make your uh, I don't know. Forge World, Lord of War, Drop Pod, minus one to be hit. Yeah, it's a legal target. Like, it just, it just doesn't matter. And I think there's gonna be a lot of people playing against this book for the first time. They're like, wait, hang on, don't you have like restrictions? And it's just like, no, you just actually don't have restrictions. Nothing matters. Um, the other one, the other thing that just like there's no restrictions are is um the cult keywords. The only places that care about what cult you are are the real one to hit aura from exalted sorcerers and demon princes and anything that's actually from the cult. So like the cult psychic power, the cult relic, the court roller trait. Everything else in the book, um, every psychic power, every stratagem, all that stuff does not care what cult you're, you're from. Anyone can do anything to anyone. So all of your sorcerers can just like buff dudes from other cults. Um, this makes the book super easy to play multi-faction. Um, the only thing you lose out from being multi-cult is you can only take the relic from the cult that your warlord is in. But there are multiple cults who just have terrible relics, but other good things going on. So you don't actually lose anything. Um, so I expect oh. to see a lot of multi-detachments. What's up, Kevin? And just just so we're clear, because some people, this might be their first time listening, oh, yes. cults are work exactly like they did from Psychic Awakening, where you pick what you give a detachment a cult. Um, yeah. They're exactly like sub-factions for a Thousand Suns, except for they're a lot less restrictive, as we were just saying. Yeah, there's just like no, there's no, <laughs> like there's no limitation. You just do whatever you want. Um, most of the cult powers that target friendly guys only work on that person. Oh. Only work on like your own models from that cult. Oh. Same thing with the cult relic and warlord traits. But other than that, like it's just it's like open season. It doesn't if you're like the cults with offensive powers, like powers that you target you point at your opponent, like don't actually care about anything else you're doing in your army. Like they don't lose anything by being in a three detachment army because they're not targeting your own students with their powers. They're just like pointing at your opponent's models and doing stuff. It's really interesting the way they chose to do this. Um, so it's interesting because it brings up the question of was Forge, there are some Forge World options where you're just like, was Forge World really thought like intended to be playable with Thousand Sons when they were writing the Thousand Sons book? Because they're, they're one of the very powerful relics is. Um, core within six inch. You, you pick an enemy unit. Core within six inches when shooting at that. You choose which modifiers to ballistic skill, to hit, to wound, and you ignore any damage reduction mod abilities affect um, your guy's shooting. And Ben and I are actually pretty happy with um, Hellbrutes and Thousand Suns because they have an invuln save. 
but that's like the best tank platform in the actual book. But then you go to Forge World and all of a sudden you have all these Contemptor Dreadnoughts that are like kind of insane. So it's like, was that intentional? Especially for how many buffs? I'd also like to note that this ability works in melee. Oh, nice. Yeah. Uh, so you pick your target in your command phase and then for the rest of your turn, uh, you have a six inch aura of ignore. Any or all weapon skill modifiers, ballista skill modifiers, hit roll modifiers, wound roll modifiers, and abilities that reduce the damage characteristic of that attack, which is uh, disgustingly like so things like disgustingly resilient, uh, anything that's like minus one damage, all the dreadnought stuff, and also interestingly, Bellacor's two CP strat where he just like reduces damage to zero. It's like, well, you just can't do that against them. Like, too bad you're taking the D6. Yep. Um, so. I know you were supposed to be taking lead, but I kind of want to move on to yeah, their no, chapter it. tactic. Okay, so what is their chapter tactic? It's it's no longer plus six inches, which um, we'll get to in Ben's and I game, but that is very relevant now. Yeah, it um, hurts. Losing. Um, replacing it is plus one to cast and a five of bin bone. And that five of bin bone for a lot of the returning stuff kind of doesn't matter because they, ha- they used to just have that rule, so it doesn't it didn't feel like an important rule when Ben and I were first reading it. And then you start thinking about some of like the random. Yeah. So, so the exact rule, it's a five of a vulnerable save on anything with the Arcana Astartes or Zangor keyword. Um, and when I first read that, I was like, okay, cool. Like that's Rubik Marines and Zangor. So we all had five of a vulnerable save. So I guess they've moved it off the data sheet and into the, 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 the rule, whatever. Uh, but it's actually, it turns out that Arcana Astartes is also a keyword that shows up on every single vehicle in the book. So really what it is, is a 5 of a vulnerable save on every model except for Chaos Spawn and Cultists. If it's not a Chaos Spawn or a Cultist, it has a 5 of a vulnerable save across the board. That's that's pretty nuts, because like, think about like all the different like vehicles where you're like, yeah, it'd be good, yep. except it gets like shot off the table because of AP4. Yeah, like, oh, Melted Guns exist. Wow. All right. It's ha- so Kevin and I were like laughing because we just kept looking at these like thousand sons vehicles and going like, can we just like play predators now? And, and no predators are not good enough, but like there's some thousand sons vehicles that we'll get to uh, later on. They're just like very interesting now. Um, but uh, Kevin, you want to talk about like Hellbrutes for a second? Like why we think Hellbrutes are just like wild winners from this codex. So one of the, the op- so one of the things that uh thousand sons is kind of missing in their shooting profile is like actual anti-tank shooting. Except for when you kind of get to the hell brute. Um, and comboing with that relic we were just talking about in particular is where it's like it feels really great. Um but Hellbirds can take a multi melta and a missile launcher and, and get a five up invuln and have damage redu- and damage reduction one baseline because they're a dreadnought. And how much do you think that all costs, Chris? How much do you think a hell brute with a missile launcher and a multi melta is? Probably around 150 points. 120. Yeah, it's uh, that's a pretty good deal. Real cheap, especially with yeah. a five up invul and minus one damage shaken. And yep. if it's damaged, it rerolls wound rolls of one. So like when you shoot at it, you better not miss. Um, and then you stack on top of that, it can ignore basically all modifiers against a particular enemy. It's core, so it's going to pick up real ones from all of your exalted sorcerers which you're going to be taking out by the way um and then it's eligible for a bunch of other bonuses so like if your tar- target's t8 there's a way of making it strength nine uh death hex is still around so you can take off invulns off of knights uh for a command point you can push all of its ap up by one all of a sudden there's no armor saves being made and you're just like melting knights uh like calibrates are real like that's a really good model now um Kind of along the same vine, uh, we we kind of like got excited about land raiders for a second. Uh, we did, <laughs> and then you uh, me that thousand suns land raiders are good. And then uh, some math was done. It turns out that it might just be uh, is it vindicators. Vindicator? Yeah, so it turns out like one thousand land raider, one thousand suns land raider is just worse than two thousand sun vindicators. Uh, so like they're T eight, eleven wounds. Three up armor, two up armor if you pay 10 points, which I actually don't know if you do in Thousand Suns. You could convince me either way. They have D6 shots at 10 neg 3 D6 at 24 inches. Um, 
like and two of them together is like exactly a land grader. It's actually five points cheaper than a land grader if you don't buy the armor. Uh and, and they have is, and they have five of vulnerable saves because they're thousand suns models. Um, and the the other drawback you would normally have with this model in like regular space marines is if you get tagged, you're you're a tank with a blast weapon. You just like we're, we're playing old eighth edition tag. You can't shoot, but you know what thousand suns are really good at doing? Yeah, smiting people off of their uh, um their precious vehicles. Yeah, you're like, oh, I touched the vindicator with ten wounds. Like that's three psychers. Like <laughs> yeah. They're gone. Um, you might have a little. So, um, want to talk a little bit about our game, actually. Um, so I I wanted to answer the question. I, I've asked this question. And I've just had that we're talking about our game, by the way. Um, I wanted to answer the question: How good are Rubik Ruins? So I took six five man squads. Uh, I also missed that the Flamer squads actually just cost way more points and are bad. Uh, but they died in the first turn, so it, it didn't matter because I never shot the Flamers, so they may as well have been Bolters. Um. And our answer was that Rubric Marines are fine. Wait, but the flamers still cost more points. Yeah, they're six points more per model. I don't, don't think about it too hard. Rubric Marines are fine, but not excellent. Um, I am not embarrassed to take them as my troop choice. I'm perfectly happy to take 15. I don't think I want more than that. Yeah. Um, it's funny. You compare them to an intercessor, and the math is like really good for the Rubric Marine. You're getting cult points for them. Your gun is as good as an intercessor gun in their best doctrine. Um, mm -hmm. But all game. Um, mm -hmm. And they're psychers. And they and have in, invuln saves. And they have a... If you're shooting AP1 guns at them, you your opponent cries. And... Damage one. Sorry. Uh, damage one. Well, all my damage one guns were AP1 and you were in cover and I cried. Yeah. Oh, also, um, their heavy weapon option is like decent, and they ignore penalties for moving and shooting heavy weapons. And, and they've lost the movement penalty. They're just moving six now. Like they're decent. Like there's just nothing wrong with the Rubik Marine. I just think that they have the Plague Marine problem, where they're just outshined by other things in the book. Um, but they're not bad. I think the problem with Rubrics and Marine and Plague Marines is that. They're, they occupy like that weird middle space where boxwalkers and Zangors and cultists are are cheap and fill that troop slot. And then for like actual durable like things like it's worth the price premium to just get Terminators. So I disagree with you just a little bit in that uh, in Death Guard, I don't like Plague Marines. I think they're just terrible. Like Plague Marines, every time I look at Plague Marine, like that could be literally anything else. In Thousand Suns, you're like, I'm bringing a battalion with 15 Rubric Marines. That's probably the correct choice. Rubric Marines are just very good troop choices. Um, they're, m m I'm like, it's like outside of like Drakari and Admech, your troop choices aren't usually like that point sufficient. So they're not like getting away with anything. But there's absolutely nothing wrong with the Rubric Marine squad. Like they're just good. I'm sorry, Chris. I also agree with Ben on. Plague Marines are in the dumps. Um, I think like, what most people do with Plague Marines is, is garbage. I think you can get cute and try to do something with a Biologist Putrefire and a Termite Drill and some Melee Plague Marines, but... You've described a more expensive version of a bunch of Terminators coming in. And right, that's, that's the something. thing. Terminators just do it better. Correct. All right, well, Terminators don't do the... Nothing does the Rubik Marine thing better than Rubik Marines, which is you are a troop, you are like a cheap source of wounds that also provides a fair number of Cabal points. That's also a Psyker. Like, they're just very good at that. Um, like I said, I don't want 60. I want 15, but I'm very happy with 15. And I'm glad to play in an edition where I can put Rubik Marines on the table and not feel like I'm making a mistake. Because previously, it was just all cultists all the time. Um, oh, and speaking of that, it's probably important to note, like, T-Suns did pick up the, like, you can't play more cultists or more Zangers than uh, core Arcana Astartes models. But that's, like, not... For them, that's not really a restriction. Like, you just, it doesn't, it's like a non rule. It's not going to be something that you have to think about during list building. Yeah. Um, and all right. And while we're here, um, another list building thing for every exalted sorcerer you take, you can also take a, in the same cult, you can take a, uh, sorcerer or sorcerer and terminator armor, uh, without taking up a slot. This is huge for T Sons because T Sons were 
probably the most damaged faction by the removal of the Supreme Command attachment. Like, Supreme Command attachment's going away, just basically removed T-Suns from the competitive meta. Um, and now you just, you just have it. Like, you can just be like, all right, here's my battalion. It's Demon Prince, Exalted Sorcerer, Exalted Sorcerer, Normal Sorcerer, Normal Sorcerer. Uh, you, you, you've, you fit three extra HQs in there. Like, you're just bringing Supreme Command attachments again. It's really good for T-Suns. Yeah. Also, uh, I don't know if you mentioned it, uh, Scarab Pull Terminators, Optech, for some unknown reason. Yeah, I was going to talk about that when I got to the the, the Scarab Pull Terminator list, but yeah, uh, Scarab Pull Terminators, just uh, ob- objective secured. For, for un- I couldn't tell you why they're objective secured, but they're objective secured. It's nuts. Yeah. Oh, yeah, it's... Uh, it's really good. <laughs> like, I, don't, I don't know what else to say. They just like went nuts. Um, I. So if it matters, I don't think it's like as bad of a decision as like what we saw with uh, Admech. But I kind of hate that design decision. Like, Optic is supposed to be something you have to like work for a little bit more. You either supposed to kind of take okay troops or like warlord traits and you have to put your characters out into like dangerous positions having like your best melee beats like also be obsec when it doesn't feel like they're paying points for being actually like obsec has a tax and does not feel like scarab cult trainers paid for that tax yeah terminators have not paid the the obsec tax um for sure i i think kind of part of what they were doing there is like they did take obsec off of cultists and maybe they were like, oh, we don't want, like, I don't know. Zangers still have it. So, yeah, it's just a weird decision. It's, I think it's where the idea is, like, Scarabical Terminators are just, like, the best Rubik Marines. Like, that's all just been, like, sort of, like, the lore. So why would a Rubik Marine be able to say that they can't? But I, I, I don't I, get it. Isn't that friendly Terminator? I don't, like, that's, like, that's a, that's a loose argument. I don't get it. Yeah, it's, it's weird. Um... I mean, I mean, I don't know. Dark Angel Terminators are obsec. Fight me. Yeah, but you're also building like an entire force of Terminators some, most of the time if you're going that route, I feel. So like they need. Well, actually, no, even that argument falls apart. Yeah. Um. So moving on. Uh. So another core mechanic that Thousand Sons got is the uh cabal points and so you generate cabal points based on one per rubric squad an additional one per rubric squad if they have an icon of flame um one per scarab occult squad one two per every regular sorcerer and the new infernal master guy infernal master uh, is gonna call him the chaplain sorcerer sure i <laughs> is successful he's a chaplain sorcerer uh, uh, three for every Exalted, Aramon, and um, Thousand Demon Sons Prince. Demon Prince, and then four for Magnus. Um, I've seen quite a few different lists, and it seems like, on average, you're going to be getting about 17 to 21 Cabal points in most lists. It doesn't seem like, seems like pretty easy to get in that range and hard to go over and hard to go under. Yeah, I, I think 20 ish is where most 2000 point lists are just going to land unless you're bringing a bunch of like weird random nonsense um and 20 also feels like about the number you want um so the only then then the only thing becomes like well where is it coming from and how safe is it because if you're like oh i got 20 it's a bunch of ruby green squads who i'm going to be like fighting with well by the end of the game you're going to have like 12 and that could be make your psychic phase a little trickier um or you'd be like, oh, my 20 is just like literally all characters and they're going to be behind a bunch of things that are keeping them safe for the whole game. Um, but generally speaking, this mechanic is nonsense. And I want to talk about a couple of things both as a Thousand Suns player and as someone who's going to play against Thousand Suns. It's like super important for these mechanics. Um, so I'm just going to read through. I think I'm just going to read through all nine abilities because they're they're very important to like because Thousand Suns just have access. They can just like pull out of these pools and just like do the thing um so first up is uh probably one of the ones that gets the most complicated which is uh imbued manifestation uh 
costs four points, and when you use it, you can use it after a psychic power is successfully manifested by a unit from your army. You have six inches to range of that psychic power's effects. So this gets into a thing that a lot of people do wrong. They did it wrong in 8th edition, they do it wrong in 9th edition, and it's not like they're doing it wrong in their own disfavor. Oh, they're doing it wrong like to get an advantage. They're doing it wrong actually in a way that hurts them, which is most people, when they cast a psychic power, they go, I'm going to do this to that, and then they roll the dice. And that's actually not how psychic powers work. Nope. What, actually, what you're actually supposed to do is you roll the dice, and then you say, the power goes off, would you like to deny it? And then if it doesn't get denied, then you pick the target. And that's a thing that we don't usually play with. Um, Eldar players do if they bring Eldred. Yeah, sometimes it, sometimes well, sometimes they do, but um, you got you got to smite the air so that you can get a plus one to cast. Yes, that's the thing that like Eldar players will do. We're going to talk about that too in a second. Um, so, but the reason this is super important is that like it's when you successfully cast. So when that or when successfully manifested, successfully manifested means you've manifested and no deny attempts have been successful. So this is happening on resolution. Why this is important is that what could happen is you could be like, I'm going to warp time. Okay, what's the range of warp time? Six inches. What are you warp timing? I don't need to tell you. All right, well, six inches, nothing really is important in range. It goes off. All right, well, now it's going off. I'm going to spend four points. The range is 12 inches. I'm picking these Scarab Occult Terminators. So you can actually change the eligible targets post-resolution of the power. And you just need to keep that in mind because you can just, like, have powers hitting things that weren't legal targets when the power started. So you have to be really careful with what you're trying to deny and what you're not trying to deny. Um... This is going to be somewhat important with a later thing that comes up where there's a benefit to just like throwing smites into the air if you're trying to like up your smite value. Well, we'll get to that in a little bit, but your opponent could think that you're trying to just like get your smite value up and then surprise like, oh, now I'm within range and like hit something. Yeah, you're like trying to get the smite value up. You're like, oh, but this one was a super smite. So uh, plus six inches, I'm hitting your dude like. That's a real thing that's going to happen. Yeah. Um, but you just like smite with all your dudes. And once you hit the super smite, you're like, well, that's the one I want to be in range. Boom. All right. Next up, this one's super simple. Four points after you do mortal wounds to a target, do D3 mortal wounds to it. Uh, Love it. Your characters are not safe. <laughs> just, that's all I have to say about that one. Just do more damage. Um, yeah, there's not uh, a lot of the targeted smites actually got taken out. There's only two left. But like with this, like one targeted smite can be enough to just murder your character. Uh, Kindred Sorcerers. This one's five points. After you roll the dice, um, you add one to the Psychic Test. Uh, yeah, this is insane. I, I can't believe how good this one is. You just, like, you fail the power by one, you're like, all right, it goes off. You're one away from a Super Smite? All right, it's a Super Smite. Um, I, I, I can't even describe how good this power is. Like, now, oh, Kevin, what do you think about that one? So, having played against Thousand Suns, a few times before this book and after this book, your psychic face just have a lot less holes. You're just very consistent now, and that's like very scary. Yeah, you don't you don't fail powers. All right, this is the other really tricky one. All right, warp sight. It's three points. It's the cheapest, and it's also like the the trickiest. Use the Kabbalistic ritual when a psychic power is successfully manifested by a unit from your army. The psychic power requires you to select a unit visible to the psyker for the manifestation. You can select a unit visible to any friendly unit with the Kabbalistic Rituals ability. Um, so, yeah, you could just like this is I'm back. We're back to the first one where you're increasing the range of a power post resolution. So the, again, this is successfully manifested. So you're like, all right, I'm manifesting Kako Demonic Curse, which is a really good psychic power. You pick an enemy unit with an 18 invisible and they lose one strength off of all of their ranged weapons. And you're like, well, my super good shooty unit's like behind this wall. So sure, it goes off. And then you're just like, all right, three points. I'm going to draw a line of sight from those Terminators that keep struck in your back line. Surprise, your super good shooty unit's crap now. Um, I, I love this one. This is, this is like a psychic version of like that thing that Fire Prisms used to do. Or still do, rather. But like, it's, it's this one is brutal and like... I know we don't like playing like gotcha 40k here, but like this, this is one of those things that's if, if you don't experience it, you're going to get got. Yeah, I, this is. Oh, sorry, Kevin. It's like not true gotcha in a way because like you're you're it's within your rules. It's just something you're doing. Um, But 
just think about everything we've talked about so far. Like in some games, sometimes you can like think about doing like mini games or like let's just say all your damage on your smites is average, and you just like look at your opponent's armor. Like, how do I maximize killing things I want to kill? Like just like literally just like you can just like as a thousand player with these cabal points, just think about playing through multiple turns like just play through that psychic phase a few different times and it's like goldfish with it because it's like yeah most armies don't have enough denies like they're gonna get one deny most yeah. most often so it's like no the, the, the real joke is the first thing you're gonna do is your witch warrior is gonna look at their psyker and blow his head off with mortal wounds and then you're like all right you have no denies psychic phase um that's not a joke like, it's just like a thing that thousands of armies are gonna do um uh, all right, I actually want to, there's more about this one too. So you can also change eligible targets for smite with this one. So you guys are like, oh, I'm smiting these guys over here because those are visible. And you're like, nah, just kidding. This guy can see behind the wall. Now that smite's going into them. Um, and like, uh, this is gonna be happening a lot where like, uh, we're gonna, I'm going back to like, oh, we're hunting for like the D6 smite. Like, all right, I'm smiting all into your guys, I'm smiting all into your guys. And you've got like some infiltrators behind a wall that only one of my guys can see. I get the super smite. All right, well, that one's going into the infiltrators, and all of a sudden, like, you're just getting smashed uh, before, like, I don't know, a squad of Rubik's charge in there to finish them off. Um, this one also needs an FAQ uh, because the way it is worded is for that manifestation, you can select a unit visible to any friendly unit with the Kabbalistic Rituals ability. That's great for targeted powers, but how does that work for smite? Is it, like, what it should be is it should be the closest visible unit that's visible to any model in my army like that's the way it reads to me but you could convince me what they actually mean is you pick a friendly unit and you pick the closest visible unit to that unit like you're measuring from the guy who cast but it's line of sight from the guy you picked so there's like a big wall he might end up being like throwing that smite over the wall to like some dude behind it that he can see you could also make an argument that because it's a select unit, all of a sudden Smite is a targeted spell. It 100% is not intended that way. But this is like a reader's written argument that it is. This just needs an FAQ. Um, as written, I would say you're drawing line of sight from every guy in your army. I think that's the fairest way to say it, which means that you can't do the complete nonsense with throwing Smites in the wrong direction. Um, but yeah, that's a, that's a thing. How do you read that, Kevin? Or, or uh, is that not just too much? A little bit on the too much. I, I just don't. Yes. So, I, yeah. I, 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 I'm just hoping for an FAQ. I need to see how usable it is. It's it's obviously powerful, um, but I don't know. It, All right. I also need to read the book, just play against this, kind of get a feel for what they mean. It's hard to tell. That's fair. Um, All right. Echoes of the Warp. This one's sweet. Four points. Uh, pick a Psyker from your army. Until the end of the turn, you can perform this following action. Echoes from the Warp. Warp Charge 3. If successful, gain a command point. So, Wait, Warp Charge 3? Yeah, that means you can't fail because they get plus 1 to cast. So you're just spending 4 Cabal points, losing a cast, you get a command point. Sometimes the dude's perils hurt themselves, but, like, you get the command point. Yeah. It's just, it's just free. Um, yeah, What's this, one's, this one's great. Um... The easy uh, application of this, we all have put units in our backline to screen things out. We're talking about that third Rubik Marines ground on the backline, like holding an objective. Well, guess what? They're getting you a command point because their spell wasn't worthwhile. Perfect. Yeah. Also, shout out to the Thousand Suns Codex being the first codex with psychic actions that non characters can do. I think the Great Knights has a couple too, but I mean, you know. Uh, all right. Uh, the dumb one, Patch from Beyond. Use this Kabbalistic ritual when attempting to manifest a psychic power with a unit from your army. Do not make a psychic test. The test is past the minimum required warp charge value. Okay. So hold like th this is seven points and it's dumb. Like this, this one is dumb. Um, there's two main applications for it. Um, the first application is if I fail warp time, I lose this game. Oh, look, I didn't fail warp time. I don't lose this game. Um, the second one is the kind of grosser one, which is every model in my army is going to manifest smite until the warp charge is 11. And then I'm going to seven points and just D six mortal wound the thing of my choice. Cause that's um, the minimal required value to cast it. The other notable thing is even if you can't get it to 11 and you can only get it to nine, 
uh, there is a strat that if a unit manifests a power on nine or higher, it can just put a marble back into itself. So even if you're like, all right, I don't have the right five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, like seven casts to get smite to eleven. It's only five, six, seven, eight, five casts to get it to nine. And then you pay seven points, you have your scarab cult terminators to it, you spend a command point, and you put a 40 point model back on the table. Yeah, that's uh, really yeah, that's right. Um, so you can use that one to just like re put a scarab cult on the table every turn. I suspect armies that play scarab cults are just going to do that every turn, and that's ridiculous. Um, yeah, all right, the next three are uh. Pretty simple. Uh, eight points is uh, after you manifest a power, your opponent just can't deny. Fair enough. It's great. Um, you're going to use this again, like, oh, I need to warp time here. Well, I need to actually roll it now because my opponent's got like a bunch of deny strats, but I can just like spend the eight points. Can't be denied. This is also one that lets you just like take psychic secondaries and your sisters with battle. You're just like, I'm going to lose eight cabal points a turn and just max the secondary versus you. And that's worth thinking about. Like, that's just really good. Um, Next up, uh, eight points. Uh, before a Psyker manifests a power, you can select a Witchfire power, so that's the power of those mortal wounds that you've already manifested. And that Psyker is just allowed to manifest that power again, even though you've already manifested it with a different model. And you don't need to know it on that model. So if your opponent's playing an army that's like particularly susceptible to like a particular Witchfire power, you're just like, well, we're doing it twice. Because um, there are Witchfire powers that have functionally blast, like they're good against big units. There's Witchfire powers that are functionally good against low toughness unit models. Um, and there's also Targeted Smites. So if you're playing a bunch of characters, you can just be like, yeah, we're going to Targeted Smite over and over and just kill your dudes. Um, that one's neat. I find it to be... I, I find it to be very good. And then the last one is nine points. It's just the same as the Fiber, which is just add two to a Psyche test. You don't want to use it, but like when it comes up, it it's great. Because you just, you know pass the test that you failed um, uh, and that is the Kab the Kabbalistic rituals uh, real quick going back to the one that lets you cast another witch fire yes. sadly smite not a witch fire sad Magnus only one gaze only one eye much sad <laughs> yeah it, it actually does specify that the same caster can't be the guy doing it again you gotta, you gotta do the second version of the power with a different dude um which Much is sad. sad. One it eye. is. It is sad. Um, because there's a there's an upgrade you can buy for your units where they can re-roll dice to determine how many mortal wounds a power does, and you'd love to just be like, yeah, he's gonna cast the best targeted spike two times to the same guy and just like take his head off. Um. All right. So that is the Kabbalistic rituals. Moving on um, to unit upgrades. Yeah, they there's there's nine of them because there's nine of everything in this book. Um. Nine, by the way, is like a really high number when designing unique things, which pushed them to do one of two things with each of these lists, which was in the case of the Kabbalistic rituals was be ridiculous and just write nine excellent powers and uh, Jesus Christ, GW. And in the case of the Legion models, we have like the five that they clearly wanted to make and then like the ones that they put in there. Um, all right, so <laughs> there's three for Exalted Sorcerers, three for, like, the normal Sorcerers, which are Sorcerers and Terminator Sorcerers, and then three for Rubik Marines and Scarab Recall Terminators. Um, for Exalted Sorcerers, we have uh, Rahadi, which is your triple caster for 25 points. Um, yeah, that's, that's really good. <laughs> um, I find um, myself putting that on every list. It does not give you a third power, but keep in mind that you can spend a command point to just like learn a new power instead of like your cult power or something like that. So it, it doesn't really limit you. Now, lore wise, those are the chapter masters of the cult balls, right? Yeah, yeah. So this is like your literal chapter master. Like Space Marines can reroll their twos to hit, I guess. Uh, sorcerers just like do D3 more mortal wounds per phase. It's, our, our chapter masters are gasoline. Um, all right, we got Paradigm of Change. Uh, so an Exalted Sorcerer can plus one wound and attack. Um, I don't know why you're like so you can build an exalted sorcerer to be like kind of reasonable at melee, but he's still worse, just worse than like literally any space brain character. Um, who he can kill with his mind from 18 inches away. Why are you throwing him at melee? All right, so next up we got dilettante, uh, the one that is cutting the internet in half. It's 35 points. This model can be given one additional sorceress or con relic. It must be a relic that they could they could have, but cannot be one 
and it, sorry, but can be done even if this model already has a relic. Every relic in your army must be unique. Kevin, why is this cutting the internet in half? Well, they can be given one, which means you still have to buy the second one. Great. Um, I'm fairly confident that GW meant you, you get it for free. Um, and if they did, it's interesting. And if they didn't, it's terrible. So, sure. I actually don't even know how many lists are going to be able to fit multiple exalted sorcerers in. Um, I think some will, but most won't. So, and I think the first exalted sorcerer is just always the Rahadi. So, we'll, we'll see there. All right. Um, our three sorcerer upgrade, normal sorcerer upgrades. Um, Loyal Thrall. Uh, basically, when you do an action, you can give up one of your powers instead of giving up all of your powers. It's 15 points. I think it's fine, but um, there's a Zanger Shaman that I'm going to talk about in your list. I think it's just better at doing all that. Uh, Battle Psyker. Uh, your weapon skill and ballistic skill go to two up, and you get attack characteristics of five for 10 points. Um, I don't like this, but I don't hate it on a Terminator Sorcerer, not for actually making you good at fighting, but because you can just like take a combi melta, and that's kind of cute just to have like a sorcerer with a combi melta that hits on twos for 10 points. It's something that you'd be like, oh, I had 10 points left over. It's not like something I'd go out of my way to do. Um, more interestingly, the good one is Witch Warrior. Every time this model manifests smite or a witchfire psychic power that inflicts mortal wounds on a dice roll, you can reroll one of the dice to determine the number of mortal wounds inflicted. And it goes on to specify that it doesn't just mean like, oh, do D6 mortal wounds. It also means like roll a D6 on a six, do D3 mortal wounds. Well, you can reroll that D6. You can only reroll one per power. Um, but man, it just brings your average mortal wounds up really high. Kevin, you played against this one. How that how that one feel? Uh, it hurt. Yeah, he was throwing out, oh goodness, eight, nine mortal wounds of phase. Because I, I was spending some command points to make him cast extra, extra spells. Um, but yeah, it was. That's, that it was just really doesn't sound fun. Yeah, this is the. So if you're not running Scarabra Calls, this is the guy that you're like spending seven sorcery points to make you D6 smites because it's D6 re rollable. Um, the. Uh, just a. So I'm going to skip some of the less interesting ones. Scarab Occult Terminator ones. Uh, you, I mean, I, I could just read You can know an extra power. I don't think this does anything. You can perform an action and still shoot. That one's 20 points. I also don't think it does anything. Um, and for 15 points, the good one, uh, at the beginning of each of your command phases, another model in this model's unit regains all of its lost wounds. Put this on Terminators. It's great. Oh, I don't hate the action sweet. one. So it's 20 points, and I think it's 20 points to shoot once, right? Because how often does a unit actually do an action more than once? Like, because actions usually have to happen in multiple places around the table. It depends on the unit. It's, it's Rubik Marines or Terminator Sorcerers. Or sorry, Rubik Marines or Terminators. Those are the two options. I guess if you're taking a big Terminator... Uh, um, hmm. Right? It's just like, it, 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 it doesn't do anything. Um, okay. Well, can we, so, um, there's a, we could talk about this forever, but there's two lists I want to talk about. Um, and I put a lot of things in those lists that I think are very good. Um, so I don't, do you want me to just like read through them? We want to put them up on the screen, Chris? I didn't send them to you. Um, I'll just read through it. Uh, I don't. Okay. So our first list is we're going to do a bunch of, this is like kind of classic thousand sons. It's, uh, hang on, let me pull it up. It's a bunch of Terminators, uh, because I think the Terminators are very good. So we're playing Cult of Time, uh, because their spell lets you rename a Terminator, or really any Cult of Time model, uh, which is going to be Terminators, Rubrics, or, or, um, Chaos Spawn. Chaos Spawn actually got the cult keyword, interestingly enough. Um, it's, uh, I'm buying one extra relic. Uh, I got a Sorcerer and Terminator armor. He is the Witch Warrior. He's got a bunch of targeted smites. I think that's just like a really good unit that you're going to take a lot of the time. Uh, we have Armon. Armon is now a triple caster, which he was before. He lost his native plus one, but he got it back from his chapter tactic. And because he lost it, he now re-rolls psychic tests. So he's just crazy good. Like this, uh, He's 160 points. Uh, I gave him Twist of Fate, Presage, and Empiric Guidance. Um which is uh, take away invulnerable saves, give you a plus one to hit, and give you a plus six inches on their range. 
Um, next up is a unit that I have put in all of my lists so far, and I think is going to just see play in a lot of Thousand Suns lists, which is an Exalted Sorcerer, who's a Reh uh, Rehenny, or Rehetti, which means he's a triple caster, with the Echo Prism as his relic. The Echo Prism is a relic that doubles the range of all blessing powers that you cast. So he can throw um, Warp Time at 12 inches, or 18 if you send Cabal Points on it. He can throw Glamour of Zinch and Weaver of Fates 36 inches across the table. He can reanimate Rubik Marines, and I believe it's 36 inches across the table. Um, let me double check the range of the Cult of Time power. It's also worth noting while you looked at that. So it's 12. Sorry, go ahead, Kevin. Um, it's also worth noting that all these blessing powers, they've decided to say don't need line of sight. So you can like, mm -hmm. you can just kind of like keep him safe behind a wall. And he's just like, he's actually doing the, the thousand sun things where he's like seeing the future and like manipulating things from behind. <laughs> he's the puppet master. Yeah. So he's just like sitting behind a wall, throwing out spells like across the entire table. Um, and the spell, the spells he's throwing are, uh, just like unbelievably good. Uh, I also gave him the Cult of Time Warlord trait, so if on one of his three spells he gets a nine or higher, uh, he gets to cast another spell, and that spell can't be countered, um, which is an excellent Warlord trait. Um, I just see that model in, like, every Thousand Suns list. How about you, Kevin? Uh, besides the Warlord trait, absolutely. It just seems like... Yeah, that's fair. You get to cast from very safe ranges on very important powers. It's just, and yeah. I think a lot of Thousand Suns lists are going to be trying to, like, the buff powers are very important to how Thousand Suns were designed. And so having a good caster, it, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Warp time at 12 is also just like, usually enough that he can just be warp timing something from just like completely outside of deny range. And if that's not enough, he can warp time at 18 with Kowal points and just make it safe. Um, or if one of his first two powers go off on a nine, he can just minimum cast warp time at undeniable through his warlord trait. It's just, there's just like so much happening there. That's nonsense. Um, oh. next up we have the, sorry, go ahead. Real quick. We're saying warp time. We're saying death hex. I Their names got slightly changed. Anymore. Got slightly changed. Um, we figure people better know those traditional names, but yeah, they did get changed. Which I hate, by the way. Like, why couldn't you just, I know why they couldn't keep it called warp time because they changed the ranges and then they'd have multiple powers in the game that were doing different things, much like the chaos space brain and Nurgle demon codexes have had the same two powers, the same name with different text boxes for years. And now we can't do it. All right, GW. Sure. I, I really wish like all these powers are still called the same thing because it would like life easier. Like why is prescience presage now? Like, come on. Um, all right, next up is we have the Infernal Master, who, as Kevin has called, is the, is the Chaplain Sorcerer. Um, he is a Chaplain and a Sorcerer. He casts one power, and he does one Chaplain thing. Um, his, the, there's, there are several, there's, like, very, the whole list of Chaplain things is good. Uh, I think the two standouts are uh, pick a unit within six inches of yourself in your command phase. Uh, they all go off on a three-up. So on a three-up, pick a unit within six inches of yourself, plus one strength through all of its guns. Uh, again, much like everything else in this book, not Korlock. You could point at a Land Raider. You could point at uh, their Deo Dreadnought. You could point at 10 Scarab Cult Terminators. You could point at yourself if you really like your pistol that much, I guess. Um, that's great. He also has one that goes off in a three up that says, until your next command phase, you can reroll a die. And there are no restrictions on that. You can reroll any die until your next command phase, unless the die has to do with the mission. Um, but functionally, any die, uh, which, is, which is really good. Um, if you fail your power for a command point, you can do a mortal wound to an infantry within six of yourself and just have the power go off anyway. Um, I think Infernal Masters are going to be in pretty much every T-Suns list. I would say so, yeah. Um, we got three Rubik Marine squads. I think every Rubik Marine squad is just going to be like a five-man squad with, with a banner. You could convince me to put Soul Reaper Cannons on them. I put a Soul Reaper Cannon on one just because I had 10 points left over at the end of the list. Uh... 10 Scarab Occult Terminators with uh, all of the bells and whistles, missile racks, uh, the Reaper, uh, Soul Reaper cannons, and uh, the uh, rights of uh, coalescence, so you can put a guy back together every turn. Uh, they don't make a new one, but if there's an injured one, it goes back to full. And then if it's a full, that means you are now eligible to bring another guy back. But if you cast a power on a nine or higher, and you also can get a Cult of Time one back too. So basically, you could heal up to eight wounds into this squad every turn, which is disgusting because it's unbelievably durable. 
They're a base five of a vulnerable save. They're usually going to go to a four up because they're going to get cast spells on from the Reheti. Um, minus one to be hit usually. For command points, you make them minus damage, damage one weapons, or damage two weapons that have been reduced to damage one, they get plus one on saves against. Um, three wounds each. Like, they're just, they're really hard to kill. Um, because I think they're great. I brought 10 more. Because I think they're great. I brought five more. Um, the 10 man squad, the second 10 man squad also has all the guns. The, se- the five man squad does not. Uh, and then I brought the Zangor Shaman that I think is going to be pretty much in every list. Um, I, you buy an extra Warlord trait on him. And that Warlord trait is he does psychic actions on 3d6. And Zangor Shamans always ride discs of each. They're 70 points, they're single casters. So he's going to give up his single spell to do a psychic action on 3d6 every turn. That psychic action is going to be a psychic secondary. Um, and I think like that's a 70 point model that just solves the secondary for you against certain matchups. You'll also have to give up eight cabal points a turn. Um, but that secondary is going to be either, um, the, the psychic ritual where you gotta be within six of the center or the one where you gotta read your opponent's character's minds. You gotta be 24 inches away. Um, the first couple turns, it'll probably also burn your warp time. You get him out of the way after he does it. Um, oh, and just as an added bonus, this warlord trait also gives you an extra cabal point as long as you're on the table because cabal points are great. And why wouldn't you want more? Um, so yeah, that's 2,000 points. It's 21 Cabal points when everyone's on the table. For the most part, everyone's not going to be on the table at the same time. You're going to probably deep strike one Terminator squad um, and put, put the other one on the table because you we kept the Dark Matter Crystal. It gained a new name. It's the Umbralithic Crystal now. But it does the same thing. You pick a unit, you put it across the table. Um, I don't know why that one got a different name. Yeah, I It's not like there's two Dark Matter Crystals. Yeah, yeah, that one's just a mess with us. Um... So you're going to put them on the table. You're probably going to throw them across the table. That, the old issue with that was you throw them across the table. Um, and then they just die because you couldn't get psychic powers onto them. But now the Reheti can just like throw three buffs on them from 36 inches away. And just like, it's great. It's so good. Um, they can reanimate themselves from across the table. It's, it, it's, just, it's just all upside. The, 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 they're so good. Um... Yeah, so that's that list. I think Terminators are very good. Um, Because the big thing that Kevin and I found was that you just need something to stand behind. You need durability, and the rubrics aren't quite there. Um, So, Ben, are you saying there's another Marine-esque codec that has come out, and we are recommending playing the the three-wound elite slot? Hmm. I am shocker. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Um, as far as like firepower goes, this like these units can be absurd. Um, you give them plus one strength. It's thirty two attacks at five damage to one for two CP. It's plus one to wound. They're pretty much always hitting on twos, rolling once. Um, then it's ten attacks at seven neg three one, and then it's four attacks at nine neg two d three. Uh, like I said, 2CP gives a pulse wound to wound. If your target has 11 or more models, uh, the Soul Reaper Cannons, which is the 10 attacks at 7 neg 3 1, goes to 20 attacks at 7 neg 3 1 for one command point. Um, at which point you're blowing away Skatari, um, which is a good thing to do. Um, and the big thing that this list does is it makes a mockery of Skatari firepower. Strength 3, Strength 4 firepower with AP 1 and 1 damage does nothing to this army. Like, the Terminators actually don't care. Like, 60, like, 20 Vanguard making 60 shots into the Terminators is, like, so it's, like, 20 auto wounds. Uh, you're probably gonna end up, like, 30 wounds. That kills, uh, what? Three Terminators? Uh, two Terminators, two, right? Which is how many you can reanimate every Psychic phase. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Oh, also, um, they have an insane intercept strat. So you, they have to be super careful with where they put their vanguard. Is depending on terrain, there's a real chance they can't just like teleport on top of you, and you get to teleport on them first. Because uh, your intercept strat is two CP. Pick a psyker with an eighteen of the target that just that is intercepted. Then pick another unit within six inches of that psyker. The second unit you pick gets to shoot at the unit that came in within eighteen inches of the other psyker. So any one com- yes. At full weapon, yeah, full ballistic skill, like no penalties, just, just just do it. So if you come within 18 inches of a unit, because they're all psychers, um, 
they get to pick another unit within six, and that unit can shoot. Which means that like a unit of Scarab called Terminator standing in the middle of your deployment zone threatened the whole area because you can boost them to 30 inches. That's pretty gross. Yeah, I love it's it. really good. It's it makes it makes coming in on the army really hard to do. Um, and it makes Scarab Colts, I think, just one of the better units in the army. Um, uh, there is a downside. Oh, sorry, Thousand Sons are very happy about their nerfs to Chicken Walkers because this means that Chicken Walkers are kind of the only answer that um, mm -hmm. Admech would have. But now that Admech, if the minus one to hit means they're hitting on fours, fours and then threes and then, or fours and then twos and then four up saves, like you are getting through a few, few terminators that way, but like it's almost as much as, nowhere as much as if they could get re rolled in all the other core buffs that they used to get. Yeah, and the Terminators are blowing away Chicken Walkers in the crackback, too. And if they ever get into melee, it's just all over because they're in melee. They're AP 3, 2 damage, which is like all of the things that the Admech doesn't, like the Admech defensive things don't work against. Like you, you ignore AP 1 and 2. Oh, well, okay, well, I'm AP 3. Uh, you get extra saves against damage 1 and I'm damage 2. And you just like all of a sudden you're on sixes and you're just dying. Um. So yeah, that, that unit is uh, really good. There is one downside, which is that they eat buckets of command points. You need two CP to give them plus one to the moon. You need three CP to give them minus one damage if they're over five models. You're going to spend a command point every turn to reanimate one, um, which is the reason why I only brought one extra relic and one extra roller trade. Like, you're starting with 10 command points, and you're basically throwing every single one of the Terminators. Over the first two turns, and hoping that, like, the fact that you haven't lost models and just killed, all, and killed a good portion of their armies is enough to... Yeah, yeah. Yep, yeah. Uh, well, keep in mind, you're getting two CP a turn, basically no matter what. Like, you, you just have the most consistent CP regen of any army. Fair enough, so you can probably do it for three turns. I, I'd be... I I can't truly believe that you're not going to use a, C, a CP or two other places. Yeah, that's super fair. Um, I also... I don't know that you're... Um, uh, veterans of the Long Warring every turn now, that's two CP. Um... Depends on like what the terminators are cracking into, but like there, there's probably enough things where you're just like, oh, the terminators have a good target, two CP, let's like kill a vehicle or something. Yeah, I mean at two um, CP, I don't know it, what... it's it's kind of a it's an actual like question you have to ask yourself because I mean Death Guard have the same thing, and you know like I can count the number of times I've used it on on one hand, whereas before mm -hmm. when it was just one CP for Chaos Space Marines, I was using it every fucking round. Yeah, but de but Death Guard Terminators don't don't have anywhere near the firepower that the, the Zinch Terminators do because we have that's, the same firepower as you, except also everything's AP two and strength five. Like it's just so much better. Um, you're tankier than than we are naturally. Like we need a bunch of buffs to, to get there. Um, but man, the the firepower on the Zinch Terminators are just off the walls. I think I think Marine players are like like people who like infantry Marines are just going to be like even sadder like they're already sad but like the the scare call terminators just blow away marines and don't take any damage from them um all right shall we talk about the uh the other list yes uh yeah. real oh, quick the only other yeah. critique i have about that first list uh yes you do have some resilient things going on i'm a little bit nervous about someone like killing your rubric some of your rubric marines and then all of a sudden you have to like keep entire terminator squads back that kind of yeah. happened in our game and it felt yep. bad for sure um, there's like there's a five-man terminator squad because i do think a terminator squad is going to end up on an objective at some point um with like the two tens doing other things i don't know this is like the best list this is sort of like a like a start you could convince me this also supposed to be like a five-man um chaos bond unit in here too because that's like another like durable punchy thing over like a rubric marine squad um and they turn the rubrics like cultists or something um but that's sort of why i came up with this other list so it's not there now but at some point this list was going to be called crash sons because it was rhino spam and it made brought joy to me thing i think the list at one point had eight rhinos in it and oh boy boxes boxes as far as i could see there's still six so you don't have to feel that bad about it kevin it's still it's still the crash of rhinos mm. um okay so first of all i am i was under nine mm, fair enough i'm still working under the assumption that um 
dilettante gives you an extra relic. If it doesn't, we could make some changes. Um, so we're bringing a patrol of the Cult of Magic. Um, I need to test this list like a lot. This cult is totally up in the air because it's not like a particular thing that I need this list to do. Like I need this particular attachment to do. I just think Cult of Magic might be the best at just providing more mortal wounds. Um, so it's uh, usually my 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 guy who's in no force org slot. The Terminator is actually my warlord. Uh, so he's taking the for the Cult of Magic warlord trait, which is he can reroll a witch fire every psychic phase. And he's actually also taking, as a relic, he's taking the relic that lets him get a second warlord trait, which for the most part is going to be the warlord trait that lets him use two Kabbalistic rituals per turn. Um, and also re in either witch chests, but he, he can decide uh, on a game-to-game -game basis. It's going to be that one most of the time. And of course, he is the witch warrior. Um, after that, we have uh, an exalted sorcerer who's uh, the dilettante. Um, he's taking the Cult of Magic Relic which is at the beginning of each psychic phase, he picks a character within six. Whenever that character uses a Kabbalistic uh, ritual, that Kabbalistic ritual costs one less. Um, this relic is, generally speaking, doesn't do anything unless you have a guy who can use two, in which case it's two Kabbalistic ritual points. So I basically spent two CP for two Cabal ritual points every phase. Um, and I think I'm happy with that trade. Um, then we've got, actually it's one CP and 35 points. All right, then we've got uh, an Infernal Master, because I think Infernal Masters are just like a must-take in every single list. Um, they've got uh, the same two powers that I think you're going to take on every Infernal Master and every list, which is the you can reroll a thing or you can get more strength on your, your weapons when that matters. Um, I got a five-man squad of Rubik Marines. I actually ran out of points. They don't have the, the extra Cabal points, so this attachment is only worth 10 Cabal points. Um, there's a second attachment, though, which is... Uh, worth eight more. So there's only 18 Cabal points in this list, which I know is like a little low, but like I said, we've already kind of bought two, so it's like 20. Um, then we've got that Zangra Shaman that I think is going to be in every list because that Zangra Shaman is really good. Uh, and then, of course, there are three Rhinos. Uh, one for the Rubik Marines, one for the Infernal Master, one for the Terminator Sorcerer, even though he can't go in it. Um, Because the uh, the Exalted... Actually, no, the Exalted Sorcerer can check into you, I guess, but he doesn't because we ran out of points. All right, next attachment, we've got a normal sorcerer, Araman, an exalted sorcerer, who is, of course, the Rehedi, with uh, the, your blessings are double at range. Then we have three Hellbrutes that all have missile launchers and multi meltas, two Chaos Vindicators without the extra armor, and three more Rhinos. That is the list. So that is six Rhinos, two Vindicators, three Hellbrutes, and six Sorcerers plus some Rubik Marines and a Shaman. That was a lot of vehicles. Yeah, it's it's eight Space Marine boxes so, with three Hellbirds. So it's funny. Uh, I was talking with Ben, and he was like, you know, all these boxes and dreads, there's not where I was expecting to go. It's like, no, Ben. We knew you were going to bring as many uh, psychers as possible and find something to stand in front of them. We just didn't realize it was going to be rhinos. Yeah. <laughs> um, so 1,000 Suns rhinos, 3 up armor, 5 up a vulnerable save, 10 wounds, 80 points. Uh, also of note, their combi bolters are Inferno combi bolters, so they have AP2 bolters. Um, you can bring two of those if you want to. You could for 5 more points. I didn't own any of these rhinos because I just ran out of points. Um, but like you could convince me that that's correct. Um, I really like this list. I think it's very good. <laughs> um, it has, it's a little low on Cabal points in like it's starting at 18, but they're all characters and they're all just going to be behind vehicles. So they're not really going anywhere until you're tabling me. Um, and the vehicles are really, really, really durable. Especially for the points cost. Um, the only thing, like, I, this, this might be, like, I'm, like, leaning into it super hard right now. Like, you could convince me that, like, I'm supposed to be bringing more Rubik Greens or something. Uh, important note, I did not take any Terminators because a Terminator squad is 200 points. And right now, if I take while we stay and we fight, I'm pointing at three characters. I'm pointing at Aramon and two of the Exalted Sorcerers, um, which is just the easiest while we stay and we fight ever. Like, just don't, like, they're just gonna live.
Um, there. The, oh, also, important note, that second attachment is Cult of Knowledge. So the Cult of Knowledge Warlord trait is Rira once a cast, which we've put on the Reheti so that he's getting his psychic buffs off even more, even more consistently. And their particular psychic power is you pick an enemy unit and all cult of knowledge within 24 and you all cult of knowledge units reroll wound rolls of one against that unit. Um, so all of our held roots, all of our chaos vindicators and three of our riders can just. Just really go into an enemy unit, um, probably going to be using this for anti tank firepower more often than not, um, but like the right hack that the riders can do is kind of funny. Um, I think that like so the Hellbrutes and the Vindicators are just hyper hyper efficient at just killing enemy tanks. Like you just pop tanks like they're nothing. Um, the fact that the Vindicators are toughness eight and the Hellbrutes are T seven with minus one damage taken and that everything has an invulnerable save means that your enemy is gonna really really struggle to kill you with like anti tank fire. Like a lot of anti tank weapons just have really awkward targets. Like all right, auto cannons. Well, they're one damage against the Hellbrutes and they wound on fives against the Vindicators. Uh... Dark Lances are reasonable against the Hellbrutes and kind of just like bad against Vindicators. And then like the Vindicators, like the Hellbrutes just like popping a Raider per turn. Um, and if the Raiders ever get like, because the Raiders sometimes want to get with an 18 so they can fire blasters off from the center. If they get with an 18, they're going to get Twisted Faded, which is Death Hex, and then just instantly die. Um, and then the like Kevin was saying before, the, the classic weakness with Vindicators is they just like get touched and then they don't do anything because they have blast weapons and nothing else. But like we have eight psychic characters that can just smite them all to death. Just get get off get off my Vindicator. Um obviously there's like some weaknesses. I have very little obsec, so we've like a real chance of just getting obsec off of objectives during my um during my command phase. Um but we can kind of carry that a little bit by just having the best secondaries ever. Uh, we get free while we stand, we fight. We hit basically have a free 15 on a psychic secondary. Um, our third secondary, we have so many arrows that engage in all fronts is all of a sudden like reasonable, as in strangleholds. Um, as is any kill secondary, we're going to be fine with because this is an army that can like seriously threaten to just table people. Um, so yeah, that's the that's that's the chaos list I keep looking at. That I'm just like, man, maybe this is like, this isn't what I expected, but everything here kind of makes me happy. Because like Kevin said, at the end of the day, I I want to put a bunch of sorcerers behind things and cast a million psychic powers, and this army really lets me do that. There's there's a lot of spell casts in this army, and they're all doing very powerful, goofy things. Yeah, I remember uh, one of my one of my lists towards the end of eighth edition was doing basically just this, where I took you know the supreme command of Armon and his two buddies, and then just put a and then just put a bunch of Death Guard like tanks in front of them and just ran them up with a board because you know I was just, I was just abusing the hell out of the character keyword. Mm hmm. Um. And the other part of this is like help help roots are insane. Help roots are. Hellbrutes aren't real. I need I need Hellbrutes. My goodness. Um. So yeah, Kevin, what do you think about this list? I'm trying. I'm thinking about how I want to kit bash my Hellbrutes. I need them. <laughs> We're all thousand some players now. Um, it's really wild. Like I I always make the joke that. DW makes all the things that were bad good in the new book, but I just like I all of a sudden I'm like yeah I want to like hit back a bunch of new sorcerers because my old sorcerers are all in Terminator armor. Um, I I'm glad that I think I've talked myself into still being able to play one sorcerer in Terminator armor in most lists, so I can use my really sweet one that used to always be my warlord. Um, but it's time to time to get some exalted sorcerers put together because man, uh, those are good now. Hey, I remember two weeks ago when you were like. They needed to make Exalt Sorcerers worthwhile, and they did. They succeeded. Yeah, here we go. What if they were triple casters who gave you more cabal points and were eligible for, like, the dumbest relics and strats? And also cast. let you take Supreme uh, Command Attachments. Yeah, let you take Supreme Command Attachments. Uh, what if the things that they gave real ones to were now actually good at shooting? Um, yeah, there's just there's a lot of there's a lot of really good things happening here. Um, this list, right. this list makes me happy. Where are we putting Thousand Suns? Uh, That's a hard question. 
I so obviously below Admech. Yeah, we're not. Well, amusingly, I think they have a good Admech matchup, but that's just like a mechanic thing. I, I, they're not like more press. They're definitely not more press than Admech into like everything else. Um, it's this 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 book, by the way, just like wins wins the, the award of like most complicated book. I I don't. It's so it, there's just so much happening here. Um, it's so hard to say because I couldn't possibly tell you what the best list is. Like it, it wouldn't shock me if like in a couple weeks, it's just like, oh yeah, the secret was like 18 rhinos, just like only rhinos all the time. Bring <laughs> some cultists to make them legal. I don't know. Um, so this reminds me of um. It's interesting because we play. I played into your Iron Hands into you, yeah. And I found that I actually had long range, long enough range guns that like I was actually able to play outside of your psychic threat range for a good portion of and my guns. But most armies aren't actually designed that way for this edition. A lot of armies just kind of like need to push up the board and run at you, and then your psychic phase just makes you so lethal, and your guns are so lethal, and then you're, yeah. You're, the the on psychic phase was like I like I had to go first. Everything was out of range. You move up to a little bit. One dreadnought like put his toe into my psychic range and just got immediately deleted by like four sorcerers who were able to advance into range of him. Like most of my yeah. army still couldn't reach him, and he just died through a five up of vulnerable save or a five up field of pain against mortal wounds. Like, um, yeah, before you get too hyped on that, I didn't make a single five up field of pain. So like, let's not <laughs> a couple. Um, I, no, to that first one, I didn't make any. Okay. I'm sorry. Um, I made the thirteenth wound. I yeah. actually made it. So one. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And, and then I exploded. Sure. Because that that was when it was time to roll the thicks. <laughs> sure. Um. But like, I mean, that being said, like that was I think it was two squads of rubric greens, the witch warrior, and and like a sorcerer. Like I, no one else. Like. Anyway, you, you, the point you're understanding the point I'm making. I understand. The, the the point is though, like when, yeah, armies that have to come to you, which is most of the meta, are gonna be really afraid because you're just everything's just gonna die. Um, and thousand suns like actually have some shorter range psychic powers that they can like CP learn. That strat's still around. You can still just spend a command point to learn a power. Um, can you that, still just replace smite? Yeah, you can still replace smite. You can still replace your cabal power. Um. Yeah. It, it. Yeah. Um. And like so, dark elves like the the psychic power. You like roll d six, beat their toughness. You do d three plus three mortal wounds to them. Well, the witch warrior can re-roll that d six to beat their toughness now. So like he's just gonna learn the power against dark elves every game, and every time a succubus wanders over to him, he's just gonna kill it instantly. Um. Like there's just so many mortal wounds coming out of this book. At the same time. Yeah, the Terminators are tough, but do they have the best things to stand behind? Not really. So it's probably is like the vehicle spam list, which could run into some issues of like Saki Bai just like hopping over vehicles and murdering characters. Um, it's really hard, is is what I'm saying. I, I it's they're better than I want to put them with like I want to put them in like the R H here. Like I I think they're playing with like orcs and sisters and kind of crushing all the old eighth, ninth edition codexes and the eighth edition codexes. Well, it's interesting. That's what I was actually getting to. I actually feel like they're an off meta pick that actually crushes a lot of the, not the orc buggy list, but a lot of the, what we've been seeing in the meta. Um, but like some, uh, some weird old meta choices, like the iron hands, like the, like actually like sit and shoot gun lines are actually kind of like a bit of a problem for them in a weird way. Like, an, like I could actually imagine making a national military eighth edition list that could beat your list just because like their guns are a little bit better and you have bodies to screen out. I don't know if you agree. Yeah. Sorry. One second. Something's going on with my bank card. I'm putting it on a hold so I can keep thinking, keep talking, Kevin, ignore me for a second. All right, so moving away from, I I would put it in the A list. Um, I think it's like a little bit of a, not counter meta, but like might actually have a real impact on how people have to play the meta. 
Um, the final thing I want to get to is um, uh, we've seen our second Chaos Codex of the edition. Um, we got to see some more uh, team managers that we didn't get to see before. Um, they are looking pretty good. If Fucking Iron Mauler Wars, Fiends! Mauler Fiends are looking good. Um, Hell Drakes are, I think, still bad, but not laughable. Um, if, if airplanes are meta, Hell Drakes will just come and kill them. They got flat yeah, four sure. damage against... <laughs> yeah. Um, and the Bale Flamer. Oof. Yeah, 2 d 3 it was at 6 and 2 2 Yeah. Real good. 18 um, inches. It's also now an airplane. Yeah. Aircraft is a... Uh, yeah, it's it's gone full circle. We're, we're now just full on an aircraft. Yeah, so it's got like the hover jet ability now too, like a Valkyrie. Mm -hmm. Although, interestingly, um, it can still charge... If it's an airplane, it can just only charge aircraft. So it can go 60 inches in charge. It can just only charge jet planes when it does this. So against other airplanes, it's just it's just a missile. You just send the missile at your opponent's airplane. <laughs> Which is pretty great. Yeah, also, yeah, it, 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 I don't know, I forgot. it's flat damage four in melee against airplanes. It's five attacks at strength seven. Like, it's just, just eats them. Crunch, crunch. Nom, nom. Um... um. As we said, Mauler Fiends look pretty good. Um, Forge Fiends? Forge Fiends. Forge Fiends. Uh, I, I'm, I'm really in on Forge Fiends. So the Hades Cannons are now uh, four shots each, so eight shots at eight and two two. It's fine. More interestingly, Ectoplasm Cannons are 36 inches, D3 shots at seven, neg three, three with blast. Shit. That's really good. Um, and keep in mind, right, the Infernal Master can plus one their strength make them strength eight so all of a sudden you're like three three eight neg three three if you're a six-man squad it's flat nine uh so like thousand suns players watch out for your opponent's thousand suns forge fiend because it's just gonna eat all of your terminators for breakfast nom, 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 nom. unless you spend three cp and make a damage too which you will <laughs> but still like it's it's real good it's very um, good by the way, Thousand Suns have the, uh, I'm going to call it air quotes, the transhuman problem where it feels like they're, all their units are designed around always spending CP. Or like, you always want to spend the CP on your defensive strats. Yeah, that's one of the things I like about the vehicle list is like, the, like you, you have Smokescreen, which is a CP, which you'll spend probably once per game, uh, once per turn. But you're not spending three command points a turn on a defensive strat. You just, you just have so much more freedom with your command points. Um. Uh. Overall, I'm very happy to see Chaos getting a pretty good codex. Um. By Bummer the way, that there's no going to be no Chaos Codex this year, though. Man, 2022. Thanks, GW. All right, it gives me like at least four months to continue painting my Emperor's children. <laughs> Fair enough. Um. So, regardless of power level, this codex makes me very happy. I look forward to playing this codex. Um, I think it's going to be a lot of fun to play. Yeah, if, if, if this trend continues the, uh, into the Chaos Codex, I will also be very happy. I mean, I still want all of the cult legions to get their own codex, but I'll settle for an Emperor's Children or World Leader Supplement at this point. Mm -hmm. Um... I'm happy to see Magnus in the trash bin like he did for doing all those things wrong. Deserves for doing all those things wrong. Okay, Kevin, sure. Um, um the uh also, Okay. Go ahead. No, I'm good. I'd also like to thank our uh uh audience. You've been very active today. Yeah, chat's been great. Yeah. Um I mean everybody wants to hear about Thousand Sons and they want to hear it from Thousand Sons players. Um, there are poor in the chat. Yeah, he did all the things wrong. He no, Magnus did one fucking thing wrong, and that was that was the not destroying the Space Wolves Legion when he had the opportunity. Okay. He did everything else right. Okay. Actually, he lost his three up and vulnerable save somewhere in the warp. That was a mistake. Yeah. 
<laughs> that was his. That really was his I'm talking about his one big mistake. If you trace it all back, it wasn't. It was just not fucking up Lehman Russ. He really should just go back in time to when he get a three up re rolling once. That's that's peak Magnus time. <laughs> all right. Um. Any other closing thoughts before we uh, sign off? Nope. I think that's it for me. Cool. Um, well, uh, thank you everybody very much for listening to this week's show. Hope you enjoyed it. Um, I'd like to thank Kevin Lieb and Benjamin Rubenstein for uh, joining me tonight. Uh, this has been the 3D6 Charge podcast. We'll be back next week. Uh, bye for now. And... Don't roll any ones. <laughs>